Yes, it all started out as a mild curiosity in the junkyard. There are some corners of the universe which have read the most terrible things. Ah, go away. Always remembering, of course, not to reverse the polarity of the neutron. Thank you, my dear. And it seems on a moment too soon. Ah, decision. Don't worry, it's bigger than this. Doctor Who. Excuse me, do you mind not farting while I'm saying the word? Welcome! Welcome! To yet another episode of Doctor Who Time and Space, episode 206 to be precise. With me, Doctor Cool. And with me, Lewis Moon. What do we have on this week's show? Um, well, we're just one week away now from the premiere of Doctor Who. So, so two weeks time, yeah. two weeks today, we will be doing our review of the pilot. Well, well two weeks. I can tell you're really excited yeah. because you, you've been doing that thing where you run around the room a bit like the, the little girl from In the Forest of the Night waving your arms yes. around. Going, but, hey, whoa! But we've got, um, <laughs> we've got one week now, so that's under seven days for you guys, depending on what time you're listening. Um, but, you know, that's really exciting. So we thought we'd hype it up with a sort of expectations sort of article for Series 10. Uh, are five things we want to see and five things we don't want to see or aren't looking forward to. Okay, in addition to that, um, I've touched on it already, but we will be giving a review of the um, Peter Capaldi story in the Forest of the Night. And we have a shed load of news, quite a lot of breaking news actually this week. In fact, probably so much news that we won't have time to talk about anything else whatsoever. We may have to cancel all of our other items. No, because then I've just watched In the Forest of the Night for no point. <laughs> well, shall we kick off then? With Normally around this first part of the show, um, we have a bit of a discussion around what we've been doing between the two of us um, during the week, whether it's yes. got to related or other geeky type stuff. What have you been up to, Mr Moon? Um, I've been... Um, I... I've been watching, actually, last week I did watch Before the Flood. Oh, of course you did, so yeah. So the second yeah. part, the ghost two-parter they did um, in Series 9. Yeah, so how did that measure up watching it again? I think it's one of those ones, um, like Into the Dalek and Time Heist the year before it, it's one of those, uh, Before the Flood is better the second time. Okay, it's yeah. Brilli- it, it's brilliant. It was the third time I'd watched it. Yeah, and it was better than the first time I'd watched it, but not as good as the second time I'd watched it. You just understand the bootstrap paradox more. Too, yeah, so. I think I think we, I can't remember whether we talked about this last week or not on the show, but I, I think um, watching. I, I always forget the, the, the way round there. Was it, what's, the, what's the first one? First part. Under the lake. So watching under the lake, it was just a really original, great quite creepy yes. Doctor Who episode and, um, and therefore the, the second part was therefore a bit of a disappointment but I think probably that was only because the first part was so good that the, the pace sort of changed didn't it however original it is there are a lot of similarities with the gang of two part or uh, Rebel Fisher and with people oh true actually yeah I can see mm. that yeah okay um, have you been carrying on with your big finish audiobook things as well? Yes, I've started a new one. After finishing The Girl Who Never Was, I started Robophobia. Oh, okay. Is that good? Yes, it seems pretty good, but we don't really know properly what's happening at the moment. Who's in that one? Um, Sylvester McCoy. Okay. So... So you you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, the Sylvester McCoy um, Big Finish stories um, presumably are better than the Sylvester McCoy first couple of seasons from the actual series yes stories they are actually i've listened to a couple i listened to signs of wonders yeah um quite recently that was good that was one of the better ones i've listened to yeah so hopefully this one will be similar in quality yeah let's hope so yes um anything else of a who 
this sort of thing? Or if not, have you, what other geeky stuff have we been mm, up to? Not who related, but we did watch the first episode of Star Trek this morning. We did? You'd never seen Star Trek before, had you? No. And I hadn't seen it since I was a, not that much older than you, actually. Um, what did you think of it? I thought it was um, really good, actually. Yeah. Um, it was... The first one was about, you know, a creature which took the form of whatever you really wanted to see, or mm. like the cremates and stuff were disguised in it really neat, you yeah. know. We won't spoil it for people who haven't watched Star Trek. What was, what was the episode called? Do you remember? The Man Trap. That's right, yeah. There was a oh. pilot, but we skipped it. Yeah, maybe we'll go back and watch the pilot at some point, but I'm, maybe. I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. It, g- yeah. it gives you, um, in times where you've got no who, it gives you another... Yeah. Um, three seasons worth of quite a lot of episodes. It was about twenty in a, which one wasn't it? Yeah, thirty in the first one. Was it? Yeah. Um, but the positive thing is, uh, well, no, the the thing is now though, I worry of not having anything. Yeah, no, anymore. that's right. You can sit down on a Saturday evening and actually have something to watch. Yeah. Though again, you've also got because um, you've just broken up your Easter holiday yes. you, for school, so. If you've got nothing to do one day, it gives you the opportunity oh, yes, to true. watch some of those on Netflix as true. well. True. And um, we also watched uh, last night and finished watching this morning um, Batman: The Dark Knight. Which yes. Is, which is very good. good film. Yeah, you hadn't seen that before, did you? No, very good. Got probably one of the best villains of all time in yeah. um, uh, the the performance of the, the Joker in that particular film was yes, fantastic. Yes, he's isn't brilliant, it? isn't he? Really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Aside from that, I mean, if, we'll keep this item quite quick today because we've got so much to talk about on the rest of the show, but um, in terms of me, um, yep. I've just been carrying on with my Game of Thrones marathon, my way through it again, um, into season two at the moment, and um, aside from that, uh, it was the big finale for The Walking Dead, Yes, and, which is which is quite good, probably, probably the least exciting finale we've had, but nevertheless still... They did kill off a character though. Yeah, oh, there, was, there was a really great bit in it, but I won't, I won't spoil for um, our loyal viewership that, that or listenership, which may not have uh, got around to watching it yet, but there was the, the, the bit with the, the death of one of the characters was probably the best bit in it, actually. Yes. So, um, if that's what we've been doing, shall we move on to the news? Yes. All uh, right, I hope, uh, I hope you've, um, your ears are ready to listen to lots of news. Lots uh, of news, guys. Well, lots coming up. Right. Goes. Yeah. So, obviously, a week away from the new series of Doctor Who, we've got a lot of news coming in, pouring in. Too much. Too much too news. Much news <laughs> when there's too little news, too much news. Yeah. Um, and um, we've got lots of a variation of news, some shocking news, some expected news some news which we thought would come a bit later but um here we go um we um are going to start off with um a breakdown mm-hmm. of a brand new trailer for series 10 more trailers but surely we've already had lots of trailers i know we've had lots of trailers but we've got a new one wow. and um this is um, a sort of um, shortish trailer, a 30 second trailer, yeah. with some shots from the previous trailer, yeah. merged in with a few new shots. Okay. And we're going to talk about the trailer as a whole, first of all, um, and then we're going to talk about some of the main points in the trailer we need to talk about. Okay. Um, so. Any thoughts on the trailer that you'd like to start with, please? Um, just literally that it was um, quite exciting again, wasn't it? It does I mean, look I, very I, good. I like the fact that we, we get a bit more focus on some of the key monsters. We see yes. more uh, side, more Mondasian Sidemen. Yes. We see more Ice Warrior Woman. We see more Missy. Yeah, I think the villains were the main focus of mm. this. Oh, and rightfully so, because I think in the end, that's what entices most people in. Isn't yes, it, it the is. Show. They like to see the monsters. Yeah, but then it's like Missy said, it's not just a time for heroes, it's a time for villains. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I thought it was a very good trailer, um, very interesting trailer, um, and I loved seeing a new peek into some of the new monsters, particularly the Mondasian Cybermen, and I'm mm. sure we'll be talking about them a bit more when we get to our um, 
are um, five yes, five no. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Do you think, um, out of interest, whilst we're, whilst we're on here, do you think the Sidemen will only be in the last episode, or do you think we'll see a lead up? Here? We might have a story arc thing. Yeah. Um, we'll talk a little bit, when we get on to some breaking news later on, which we won't spoil yet, but when we get on to some breaking news later on about a certain returning character, and yeah. um, be aware if you don't want to know who that is, which you must have seen it on the internet by now, um, then you could, you know, minus moderate spoilers yeah. um, but you know we'll talk a bit about how we think things are going to work out yeah. in that later on Okay. but let's break down the trailer then so the shot op- uh, the trailer opens with a new shot of the Doctor um, in a sort of space suit surrounded by lots of guards and other people this is likely to be episode 9 of the series ok uh, we won't reveal the titles until we get onto that. Um, so then uh, we have a shot of um, a sort of mysterious castle like building. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Uh, I don't know, but the doctor seems to be rowing uh, towards it mm. with some people. This is from an unknown episode. It's yeah, a okay. very intriguing shot. Yeah, I like that shot. It looks yeah. good. Yeah, like castles and things. Yeah, and then we get to a shot from the Eaters of Light, okay. um, which uh, sees the Doctor check out a portal in the wall. Okay, yeah. Then we move on. We see this strange new f- creature. Um, maybe it will be a helper droid, or it looks like some sort of droid um, from episode 9, which is the Ice Warrior episode. And that's where the Doctor and Bill confront that guy on Mars. Yeah. What okay. do you think that could be? So, um, I don't know. <laughs> mm. To be honest, I have no idea. But it's, it's, I like the picture though, it's good. Yes. Good shot. Then we get on to um, a clip from episode 6. Yeah. Extremis. Yeah. And um, it's got this cardinal yeah. um, who is being attacked by a truth monk. Yeah, I love that picture. Yeah. That's great. I wonder what that means. I don't know. Well, it's part of the three part epic mm. in the middle. Do we know, with this three part epic, excuse me again for interrupting you, but with this three part epic, do we know whether it's a true three part or just a three parts we don't know much. with a link? We don't know much about how they link up or anything. Okay. Yeah. We don't know whether it's three separate, like Heaven Sent, Hellbent, and Face yeah. the Raven. Um, but as you can see in the background, there's books, um, and there's a few libraries in the series which you can notice, which is the basis of the Time for Heroes mm. trailer. Yeah. Do you think that's this is where it's come from? You know, the maybe it's all the same library. It's just split by dimensions yeah. or something like that. Maybe the library is going to be the story arc. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will be. Um, then we see a shot, for, another shot from the Eaters of Light, um, and a Roman soldier, um, and his torch, is being dragged into some sort of portal um, in the wall. Okay. So intriguing shot. Yeah, this that's is a new sort, shot, isn't it? That yeah, this confirmation. These are all new shots okay, we're talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is an intriguing uh, shot and a confirmation that we... Oh, OK, yeah. Then we see a shot of Missy dabbing from um, episode 6, Extremis, and or the, um, the two-part finale, which is all Lewis Moffat's fault. Um, Why is that? For the dabbing. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, then we see Heather, the killer puddle, um, come up with the ground in the pilot, so the opening episode. Yeah. What do you think of these killer puddles? Um, Sounds rubbish, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, in the same way as the killer leaves from class. Sounds rubbish, doesn't they? Killer, killer parts, petals. Killer petals, that's right, yeah. But um, I don't know, we shall see if it's, if it's something like the flood. And it'd be yeah. quite a good thing. Well, no, some reviews have said that it's a bit underve- underdeveloped. Oh, uh, okay. But. Yeah. I bet it's just in there to get Bill and the Doctor to meet. <sighs> do, we, do we know, out of interest, how much of a role the Daleks have got in this? No. Okay. 
Um, I'm guessing quite a short role, mm. yeah, but so. it looks like the Mavellians are going to be in it, so it right. would be strange to see them making a cameo when the Mavellians are in it too. Yeah, and Mr. So. Focus is going to be on the Malev- Mavellians. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Well, we saw a Radio Times picture earlier on in the week, and one of the clues was a Mavellian gun. Oh, and it really? was clearly a Mavellian gun. Ooh. Okay. Um, next up, we move to a shot of what appears to be one of the giant lo- wood lice oh, um, from then. episode four. Yeah. Uh, knock knock. Um, so it's very intriguing shot. Um, yeah. Quite a creepy idea for a monster. Mm. Doesn't this is the this is the new writer, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah, Mike Bartlett. Yeah. Is coming to write an episode with okay. you. Then we move on to a shot of, yeah, the Mondasian sign men. Oh, yes. They look brilliant, don't they? They do, yeah. And in this shot, there's loads of them invading the streets of Cardiff. Yeah. Um, and that's a scene from episode 11 or 12, but we imagine it's from episode 11. Yeah. Um, amazing to see those back in it. And mm. as I said, we'll talk a bit more about them later on. No, definitely. Then we see a shot of uh, the Ice Warriors. Yep. Oh, um, which looks like the female one um, from episode nine. Okay. Then we have the creature who appears to be the eaters, the eater of light. The eater from of light. The eaters of light. The one and only eater uh, of light. <laughs> and it's some sort of strange dinosaur mammal type creature. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you think of this creature? Do you think it could be the same thing that's stuck under the Thames? Maybe, maybe. Maybe maybe all of these are going to have a big link that go through. Mm. Right from the start. That'd be intriguing. A story arc that links every story together. Yes. As you can see behind there, you can <laughs> see that portal that the Doctor is going to go Oh, in yeah. Again. Yeah. Then you see Missy in some sort of TARDIS. Yep. As we can tell from this image, either she's stolen the Doctor's TARDIS or we see inside her TARDIS. Yeah. Because you've not really seen inside the Master's TARDIS for a while. No, not... not. Have we ever been in New Who? Yeah, not since Classic Who. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I was yeah. trying to think, Classic Who we did with a few episodes, didn't we? Yeah. We certainly did in some of the poetry ones. Yeah, and we did in some of the Davidson ones too. Yeah. So, yeah, a few appearances of the Masters TARDIS. Then we go on to... Oh, no, that, that shot was in the previous trailer. Um, the shot of the tree swanks. Um, and then the trailer ends with a very intriguing shot. Yes. Of Capaldi regenerating or using regeneration energy mm, how can of it be? some form. Um, do you think he's dying in an earlier episode than expected? Or do you think there's something more to it than that? I suggest there's something more to it than that. I don't know what it is. But yes. I suggest there's something more to it than that. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't like this whole thing about being able to share regeneration energy. No, neither do I. They've used it at least once. Um, yeah. The gang as one, I think, they used it, didn't they? Mm-mm. Yeah, I think so. But they also used it in, um, River in um, Angels Take Manhattan. Yeah. To heal River Song. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really like it. It just seems like a real bit of a cop out to me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so intriguing trailer there with a few new shots to excite. Um, what? Um, so, um. I think that'll be the final trailer. Um, Well, we might get one at the end of the pilot, but we'll talk a bit more about that certain trailer um, later on and what's different about it. Have you seen the trailer? Not necessarily that trailer, but have you seen a trailer on the TV yet? I did. um, It was over a week ago now. Um, Yes, it was on TV, but it was the one that they showed at the football, so the leaked one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, I wonder why it's not been on yet. Because only a week away, you would think it'd be on heavy rotation now, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, no, they did show this trailer. This trailer debuted on TV. Oh, did it? It oh, had okay. a clip of Nardole saying, 
watch. It's the new trailer or something. Okay. Originally, <laughs> and then it came on. So yeah. people on TV must have thought, yay, there's a trailer. At last, yeah. At last, we've got another one. <laughs> Actually, not at last, because it's been only like two or three weeks. It's yeah. the last one. So, um, anything else to talk about the trailer? Um... Not about the trailer, no. Okay. We'll move on then. Should yep. we move on to yep. titles? Yeah, move on to more news, yeah. Titles then. Uh, I can name these off by heart. Every title writer and director. Okay. Series 10 have been confirmed Ooh. bar the finale. Okay. So, that, that's at the time of recording anyway. Okay. Um, so, obviously we knew the pilot was written by Stephen Moffat. And we knew that was the title. Yeah. Um, then we've got Smile, written by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Yeah. Thin Ice, written by Sarah Dollard. Okay. Knock Knock, written by Mike Bartlett. Yeah. Oxygen, written by um, Jamie Matheson. Okay. Uh, Extremis, written by um, Stephen Moffat. Yeah. The Pyramid at the End of the World. Good title. Written by um, Peter Harness. Mm -hmm. The Lie of the Land, written by Toby Whitehouse. Okay. Um, the Empress of Mars, written by Mark Gattis. And The Eaters of Light, written by Rona Monroe. Plus the untitled, yet untitled series finale, um, which is um, written by Steve Moffat, mm. directed by the brilliant Rachel. Hallahay. Yes, yeah, that's right. It's good to have her back in, isn't it? Yes. So, thoughts on the titles? Oh, well, can I ask a question on the titles? Yes. We um we had a little while ago a trailer where it looked like some of the titles were being revealed. Yeah. Because there were books with names on them. Yes. How many of these were written on books? Five. Okay. All of them that we thought was actually were actually the real titles, yeah. are actually the real titles, all of them once oh, okay. teased. And uh, so it's very interesting to have that shown off in a trailer. Mm. Yeah. And it sort of was a snapshot in brief yeah. little bit, but it's good to have hints to it. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. yeah. I wonder, um, hmm, I wonder why they decided to do that. I wonder if there's a hidden message in that by the fact that these titles on the books. I don't know, really. Yeah, because it could be that they're, I don't know, could be sort of telling some sort of uh, hint or teaser or something yes. like that. Something like that. Oh, sorry, I just that's trolled fine. your hand thinking yeah. that was part of the seat. Yeah, um, yeah but it, it could be that, that's, that that in itself is sending a message out. Maybe, mm. maybe. Yeah. Um, but, yes, we've got all of those. What were your favourite ones? Um got them all already but not the pilot I don't really like the name the pilot okay um what was the other one again Smiler Smile Smile yeah see if you can remember them no I can't they're nice eat of brains or something like, like right. yeah. <laughs> not knock yeah oxygen extremist pyramid at the end of the world live of the land empress of Mars empress of Mars pyramid at the end of the world and the year of light okay and yeah those pyramids. are the best titles I think um Obviously, we kind of knew about Pirate, Smile, Thin Ice, Knock Knock, Oxygen and Extremist. We'd had Eaters of Light confirmed, but Empress of Mars, Life of the Land and Pyramid of, at, at the End of the World were a complete surprise. Yeah. Um, so, directors then. We've got Lawrence Goff directing Episodes 1 and 2. Okay. Bill Anderson, Episodes 3 and 4. Charles Palmer, Episodes 5 and 10. Daniel Nettiam, Episodes uh, 6 and 7. Live the Land, uh, episodes um, eight, no, Wayne Yip, <laughs> episodes mm -hmm. eight and nine, yep. um, and Rachel Tallahay for episodes 11 and 12. So okay. six writers, um, six directors, sorry, um, and there's quite a lot of writers this year too. So how many of these directors have we seen in here before? Many of them? Um, I think there's two new ones. Okay. I think that's how it is this yeah. year. We've seen Daniel Netty and we've seen Charles Palmer, we've seen Rachel Tallahay. Were any of these class people? 
And Wayne Yip. Wayne Yip was class. Okay, he's doing the opener, isn't he? No, he's doing episodes eight and nine. Okay. The Ice War- the Empress of Mars and yep. Live the Land. Okay. Truth Monks right. and Ice Warriors. Sounds good. So the three parter will have two different directors. That seems very weird. It does, yeah. Three writers, two directors. Yeah. One story. Yeah, I think um yeah, we should see. I I think that will go on to demonstrate what we talked about earlier, which is that they're not as such linked. No. And there'll be separate stories in the main right with some form of overarching Yes, tale. probably. Okay. So, um anything else to say about titles from your perspective? Um, you got three favourites. Uh, I would say my three favourites were... Um, actually, I'd agree with you. Did I you? think Ooh. Pyramid at the End of the World, Empress of Mars and Eaters of Light. Yeah. I think Eaters of Light and Empress of Mars, they're very Doctor Who-esque. Hmm. Yeah, they are, definitely, yeah. Where, and I suppose, would you say Pyramid, Pyramid at the End of the World? Yeah. Would you say that's a doctor? It's got it's got a sort of mummy on the Orient Express sort of like type yeah. to it, isn't it? Um so those those three feel like very Doctor Who S titles. Yeah. But in particular the first six episodes, the one you know, the shorter titles, they don't really feel like Doctor Who titles. No, no, they don't. I don't know why, they just lack that sort of Doctor Who feel. Certainly the pilot doesn't sound like a Doctor Yeah, I know. And why don't we get names anymore, like Doctor Who and the Silurians? I don't know, we need Doctor Who and the... Mm. Even though I hate the, when they use Doctor Who instead of the Doctor. <laughs> um, should we move on then? Yep, let's move on. We've got some very shocking news this week, oh. and it was rumoured all week. Is there a new Lethbridge Stewart novel? No, but John Sims' master is set to return in series 10. This is big news, isn't it? This is big massive big news. news. Yeah. For a number of reasons. Yes. Sorry. John Sim will return as the master to battle the Doctor, brackets Peter Capaldi, uh, new companion Bill Potts, brackets Paul McKee, and Nardo, brackets Matt Lucas, in the forthcoming series of Doctor Who. Um... John Sim says, I can confirm that it's true, thanks to the power of time travel, I'm back. It's always a pleasure to work with this great team of people, and I can't wait to, uh, for all of you to see what the Master gets up to in the mm. next series. Yeah. Stephen Moffat, writer and executive producer, says, Nothing stays secret for long on Doctor Who, but you'll have to wait a little longer to see exactly what the Master is up to, and how he makes his return uh, to face the Doctor. It's been a huge pleasure uh, to have fan favourites John Sim and Michelle Gomez face to face in the same role. It's not often you get to see a solo personality clash. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because they're both a bit mental. They are, yeah. Thank so, you. It's going to be a battle, um, of the, battle of the strange psychos. So, this is a very important thing for a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number one. John Sim is back. Hooray. And John Sim, if you are unaware, played the master in the RTD era. He appeared in Utopia, Sound of Drums, and Last of the Time Lords in yep. 2007. And then, um, le- and most recently, um, he appeared seven years back on New Year's Day 2010 and Christmas Day 2009 in the uh, two part epic the end of time hard to believe that that was seven years back I know it's very hard yeah. are you glad to see him back um I am actually yeah he is a very very mad master so do we what do we reckon with this then do we think mm. we're going to be in a position where we've got the master and the myth and Missy in the same way as we occasionally get two, two doctor stories well, it looks like it. I mean, it's going to be our first double master story. Yeah. We multi master story. We've never had a multi master story, so that's number two why it's so important. Mm. Um, and you know, um, it's going to be great to see Michelle Gomez, who I would say is the second best master, yeah. um, up against John Sim, who is equally mad. Yeah, even, which, maybe even more crazy. Who do you prefer the two of them? Michelle Gomez. Yeah. Yeah, should be good, though. Mm. 
Okay. She will be, yeah. Um, and very good. This is very big news yeah, for us, yeah, definitely. really. Is, yeah. um, and have you ever seen John's um, in an episode? Only in clips, not in whole episodes. I think I watched the first part of End of Time. Yes. With all the duplicates clapping. Yeah, it's a good episode, yeah. End of Time. But I've not seen, I've not seen the, the whole story. Um, so, um, viewers will have to see, um, exactly how the Master will return to the new series when it begins. We don't know which episode he's going to appear in. What's your betting? Finale. Yep. Um, maybe Christmas special. Um, could this mean the end of Missy? Oh, um, it could do. It wouldn't surprise me if Missy goes out. At the same yes. time as Capaldi and goes we out do. at the same time as uh, we all, Stephen we, Moffat. We would love to see them regenerate together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. And then maybe the first Chibnall episode, the Master versus the Doctor episode. Yeah, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, so, there may be spoilers here. Should we talk spoilers? Rumors? Yeah, we, as long as we put some warnings are you okay. now spoiler do you alert. know what we're going to talk about here the yep, rumours that we had yep. um, spoiler alert major rumours um, how f- how long do you think we'll be talking uh, about a couple of minutes two minutes skip past please skip okay so um, basically this week we learned uh, well no not this week but I read a rumour this week um, which could possibly be true about the doctor and that his regenerations could yep. be wiped Yes. Um, do you? Do, how do you think this fits in with John Sim? Do you think there's something going on with time? Could be. I'm, I'm not convinced about this whole wiping of the future because surely, um, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a long time since I've seen it, but isn't that effectively the story of the five Doctors? Um, where, they, where they're wiping them from existence? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But, no, um, I don't know, really. Yeah. So. Um, that would seem a little bit of a, you know. Yeah. Um, God. But, Mondasian Cybermen are also returning. Yeah. So, our theory is something's very wrong with time. Yeah, I think something's going to be wrong with time, definitely. Um, I think multiple masters and multiple Cybermen. Mm, yeah. Yes, that could be very weird, isn't it? Um, I wonder if we'll ever see. What do we know if uh, the Roger Delgado. Um, master. We don't know whether that was his first regeneration or not, do we? Um, or his first body? No, not officially. I no. don't think it was. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else to say about this this item? Um, not really. Um, any other theories on it? No, was uh, did we did we have another one yesterday about about something like this? I, I I think I agree with you about there being some sort of issue with time and that's what's generating them back. Oh, we did have another theory. Yeah, what was that? Missy. Oh yes, that is true. Yeah, um, so you, you're still in spoiler mm. alert territory, I think. So. Uh, spoiler alert, maybe mm. possible spoilers. Yeah. Missy could not be who she seems uh, yeah. to be um, we think she's the master but there could be a possibility that the master's not regenerated yet and really she's the Rani or another time lord yeah I think that um, whilst it's feasible I think it'd be a bit of a cop out it would it would be a bit of a shame it would be a bit hmm. I think fans would hate that because they've been lied to yes no, that's right yeah um, and it sort of devalues the Missy character a bit I think it does, yeah. Uh, there again, I mean, I guess it could be Moffat's way of getting out of it because it, I guess if if you get offered for John Sims to come back into it, um, chances are you're going to snap his hands off. Yes. Aren't you? <laughs> so, so it could be that. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, airtime for the pilot has been confirmed. Yeah. And it? um, it's going to be on the 15th, so Saturday the 15th of April, as we knew. Next Saturday. Um, next Saturday at 7.20pm. Ooh. Which is the perfect time for It is me. the perfect time, yeah. I said last week, somewhere in between 7 and 7.30. Mm. We've got that. And we'll have to make sure that we got our um, our, our travelling going all right, haven't we? Mm. To get back from here. Yes. Podcast Central. Podcast Central. Okay, 
Um, any thoughts on that UK? I time? think that's a good time. I think it's a perfect time because it's early evening. Um, I think I, I, I don't think they'll do much to stop the declining viewer numbers. I, I guess you no. may get a few more just because it hasn't been on for a long time. But but it clashes with Britain's Got Talent, as I learned today. Yeah, is that is that sort of like for like time? Does that start about seven as well? No, it starts at eight. Okay. So seven twenty then. So it only overlaps by ten minutes. Yeah, over only overlaps by ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's move on to um, Moffat. Uh, so um, that's the wrong article. The other day was the series ten press launch. Oh. Uh, so all of the newspapers and stuff. Um, watched the episode um, so they sort of gave up their reviews you can look online for some of them um, and Moffat one of the most striking moments in it was when Moffat warned of an enormous series 10 spoiler coming after episode 1 so with this big spoiler then was that did he warn the press uh, yes, I think so. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so he said, um, so, um, Tuesday night saw the UK press screening of the opening episode of Doctor Who Series 10, and after came a new trailer. A trailer that prompted a warning from Stephen Moffat first because it uh, features an enormous brain melting spoiler. This is just a public warning. Some people hate spoilers and some people love spoilers and everybody hates me whatever way they think about it. So, so, just stopping that there then. Yeah. Is this the trailer that we've just watched? No, it's one after episode one. Oh, okay, okay. You know yeah. how they did it at the 11th hour? They yeah. did, instead of doing a trailer for The Beast Below, they did a trailer for the whole series. Yeah, again. okay. Yeah. Um, so this is my last attempt uh, in this role to avoid hatred. At the end of episode one, there will be yet another uh, or, another awesome trailer for Doctor Who. At the very end of the trailer, there is, frankly, an enormous spoiler. A spoiler that may actually melt your brains. But I promise you, you'd be better off not knowing, because awesome uh, though it will be here, it will uh, be even more awesome in a few weeks' time. So we're going to give you the option in our, frankly, uh, camp and ridiculous way. Which Ooh. I don't see the point of that because if he wants us to wait for it, then yeah, because uh, well, there's, there's no point anyway. A, it could well be what you've just announced a little while ago and could have therefore been spoiled anyway. B, um, if it isn't the case, if it isn't that, then it will be on Twitter anyway. So yeah, and online. I, I don't, I don't like that idea. It's different. I like the way they're trying to, again, trying to think of different things to try and spark interest, but I don't yeah. think I necessarily think that's a good one. Um, there will be come up a warning, and then there will be a countdown to the spoiler, and then there will be a warning to blink now. Okay. If, if at that point you close your eyes and wait until you hear the cliffhanger noise, you will have a, be a better experience in a few weeks' time. Now, if that isn't going to encourage fans to watch, not much else will. <laughs> that is true. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, would you watch the spoiler or not? Um, I will. I yeah. bet it's going to be like John Sim or something. I think you're probably right because that was before that was announced. But it, it would be such a shame because everyone's like, yeah, we're going to get something. Oh, it's, we've already oh, knew that. We knew it, yeah. Well, it would actually be quite good to yeah. see John Sim in a shop and yeah. series because you haven't seen But not as cool yet. as if they've managed to keep it secret and no. said we've been in it. Imagine I know. Um, it's pro it might be a shot of like Missy and John Sim together or yeah. something. Yeah, it could be. Um... Ah, oh, what do I move on to next? More news. Got a lot. Uh, let's talk about details. Okay. Uh, I won't read a details about thin ice today, but I'm going to read a synopsis from Dorm, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. About episode two, smile. Okay. The Doctor takes Bill to the Colony World Glissy five eight one D. It's a bright, sunny world tended to the. Uh, Tempted to by the uh, tiny bird like Vardis and their user interface, the emoji bots. There's just one thing missing colonists. As the Doctor and Bill investigate, they discover that to keep smiling is their only hope of staying alive. What are Ooh. your thoughts on this synopsis? Um, I feel better about that episode having read the synopsis. Yes, that's usually how the episodes mm. go. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it, it sounds all right, that. Yes. Sounds okay. Um, I still don't suppose it would be the best one in the series, but... No, probably not. But we shall see. I like to go in with an open mind. Yeah. Um, so, Bill. Bill yep. Potts. Don't get too attached to her, because if rumours are to be relieved, she might be uh, um, only a one-series wonder. Ah. Paul McKee will reportedly leave with uh, Peter Capaldi and Stephen Moffat this Christmas. This isn't the first time we've heard such news. Back in November of last year, the BBC was said to be aiming for a clean slate for Chris Chibnall's new Overrid series 11. The Sun say new Doctor Who sidekick Paul McKee is being axed before she's even been on screen. The actress 29 will leave after just one series when Time Lord Peter Capaldi goes at Christmas. The thing is, they make a big deal out of that, but in reality, we were talking about it the other day, weren't we? There's not a yeah. great number of companions that lasted a long time. No, there were um, The majority were only one season, one and a half seasons. Because right, it used to run right. a little bit different in the classic Who era, didn't it? Where companions wouldn't come in necessarily at the beginning of the series. And They'd they come in at any old time. At the leave end. at any old time. Take someone like Neela, she wasn't there for complete seasons, was she? No, she wasn't. She was there for a series and a half. Yeah. It's thought that uh, to have been a joint decision of B- the BBC and Broadchurch writer Chris Chibnall, who replaces current boss Stephen Moffat after this series. She would join the Doctor and Matt Lucas, who is back as Nardo, when the series starts in a fortnight, well, a week. But a source says uh, bosses have decided to uh, have a completely fresh start. Peter has already confirmed his exit, and the rest of the team stays in numbers too. It's yet, it is yet uh, to be formally decided, but it makes sense to give Chris his own choice of actor to play the Doctor and his companion. Yeah, uh, I think there is, yeah. a, there is a lot of sense in that. A BBC spokesperson says, We will never reveal the fate of individual characters on the show. Viewers will have to tune in to find out. We are still filming Series 10, and no... Ca- well, they're not anymore, they've wrapped. That is finished, isn't um, it? We were still filming Series 10, and no casting decisions have yet been made on Series 11. Okay. A spokesperson for Pearl declined to comment. Yeah. Um, it's weird to think of Series series 11 when we just approach... They always talk about the next series just as you approach the current one. Obviously a little bit sad we've only got that many Capaldi episodes left. I know, we've only got 13 left. Yeah. One left to film. Yep. Shocking. Right, final news today. Yes, we've had a lot of it. Um, final news today, um, and I'm going to close that. Um, t- uh, Dawn. Yep. Issue 511 was wow. released this week. Um, it's a preview issue for Series 10, and it's got the main feature in it. It's an exclusive interview with Paul McKee, who... Um, plays new companion Bill Potts. Previous Otherwise known as um, leaving companion Bill yes. Potts. <laughs> what is Bill Potts? Previews of the first three companions of the 2017 season, the pilot Smile and Thin Ice, with exclusive interviews with writer Stephen Moffat, Frank Cockford Boys, Boo and Sarah Darlard. Um, Doctor Who producers Nikki Wilson and Peter Bennett reveal the behind the scenes Secrets of making of the making of the show too. Um, so yes, that's the preview side of it. Elsewhere, 1983's um, Terminus is put under the spotlight in the fact of fiction. The Time Team watched 2011's Curse of the Black Spot. Showrunner Stephen Moffat introduces the writers of the 2017 series in his latest column. Brand new comic strip action as the Doctor and Jess have a showdown with the Master in Doorway to Hell. Um, at, which is the conclusion of that story, plus previews, reviews, official news, prize winning competitions, and much, much more. Ooh. It's on sale now. Sounds good. Um, by the way, um, next time um, it's been confirmed that it's going to be the first comic strip with the Doctor and Bill. Oh, is it? Yes. So before she's even been in the series? No. Oh, no, she wouldn't have been. So she would have been in it by a bit by yes. now, wouldn't she? Yeah, no, okay, that's fair enough. Presumably, then, the comic strip writers must have seen her in action a bit. Must have done, In order yeah. to be able to know what she's going to be like, personality-wise. Yeah, wise. they must have done. Yeah. Either that or comic strip 2 will suddenly have a different, completely different character. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Any other news, Tom? I don't think so, I no. I thought I saw a rumour of a new Lethbridge Stewart novel. Am I? Um, no, that was just a subscription. We don't have uh, time for it. Okay. Right, um, should we, um, should we, um, move on? We should, to our next item. Which, which is? is our, uh, five things we're looking forward to and five things we're not looking forward to for series 10. <laughs> So then, we're only a week away now to series 10, so we thought we'd discuss some of the things we're looking forward to, some of the things we're not looking forward to in the upcoming series. Okay, so we're going to try and do five things that we are and five things that we aren't. Uh, You explained it to me earlier on, Lou, that if we can only think of four things that we aren't looking forward for then we have to think of another thing that we are looking forward to. Yes. So it's got one way or t'other. It could be ten things you want to look forward to. I guess. No, it, it has to be at least two of oh, one. Oh, okay. So. <sighs> okay. So, um, are we, are we going to agree between ourselves? Have we, have we got to come up with five of each? each? No, we're, we'll work together. We'll work together collectively. Okay, yes. then. So, um, what are we starting with? Things we want? Um, okay. You got any ideas to start with? Are we doing things we want or things we look forward to? What do you want? Things we, we, we're looking forward to, yeah, things we're looking forward to. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put Mondasian side now. Mm-hmm. Let's discuss these then. So, Mondasians are returning. Yep. For series 10. Um, we're hoping in a large-ish role. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to this episode and perhaps it looks like... You know, it's my most anticipated episode so yeah, far. Yeah. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Mondasians again. I'm sure Peter Capaldi is. Yeah, no, I'm sure he is as well. Um, it's going to be made even more interesting if what is true, what, what they were saying about there being sort of like sidemen through the through the years, isn't there? So, yes. So I, I think one way or other, I think I'm, I'm in agreement with you. On the Cyberman. I think, this, yeah, we were we were seeing on the fan show this week new creatures called Top Knots, okay. who were like partially converted Cybermen. Yes. Can you remember those? Yes, we do. Are we are we sure that's what they are? Partially yes. converted ones. Has that been confirmed? I think. So I really like the look of them. They look they really do. creepy, don't they? They look very cool. They look sort of like they've got sort of the cloth faces still. Yeah. But yeah. they don't really have any face or anything. Yeah. No, I, I like the look of those. They, yeah. They do look good. Um, Cybermen, of course, are uh, Zygons aside, Zy- the Cybermen are my favourite villains, and yet, uh, apart from Dark Water, um, I've not really been that thrilled with any Cyberman story from New Who. No, I don't think. Definitely when you take Closing Time and Nightmare and Silk, yeah. those were yeah. quite awful Cybermen stories. Yeah. Um, the also, RTD ones were sort of meh, most yeah. of them. And I'm not really that. I don't really like new Cybermen very much in terms of their design. No, neither do I. They're just not that yeah. great. So, um, but Mondasian Cybermen, different thing completely, yes. Yes. Apart from their hands. Yes. Okay, um, so that's, that's one. I think on a similar front, um, I'm going to say the return of the Ice Warriors. Mm. Really looking forward to seeing the Ice Warriors come back. Me too. Um, and it's good that they put. Looks like there's a different spin on the ice warriors. I don't think we've ever. Have we ever seen a female ice warrior before? Mm. No. Yeah. We haven't. So, so that in itself is going to be good. Um, do we know? Is, is she going to be a nice queen? Is she an emperor or something? We, uh, empress. Empress. Yeah. So, yeah. We don't. Um, that's what the title suggests. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? So um, that'll be very interesting to see that. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing more than one ice warrior this year. Yes. That will be good. It'd be interesting to see whether we're seeing good ice warriors or bad ice warriors. Cause yeah. Be, how good or bad they are has varied quite considerably, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has, yeah. Cold yeah. War, they were sort of mixed. From the start, yeah. you thought they were bad. Yeah. But really, they weren't that bad. No. Okay. Um, so, um, then um, we are going to move on to our third one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say... Capaldi. Yes. Because Capaldi is one of my favourite doctors. Yeah. Okay. He's quite near the top. Yeah. So it's he's a brilliant doctor. 
and I think I'm really looking forward to seeing him show himself off in his final series. Yeah, I still think the last two series with Kyle in it get a rough, get a bum mm. deal because I actually think they're really, really standoutish. They definitely get a I, rubbish. I don't understand why they, why they don't get much love from a lot of the Hoobies, I know. but um, I can sort of see it from a general punter perspective. Capaldi's Doctor is certainly not as easy on the eye or easy on the mind as, <laughs> say, certainly David Tennant's Doctor. Mm. But um, he's more Doctor-like than anyone we've had in New Who. In New Who, yeah. yeah. He's very Doctor-like, very alien. Mm. You know. I would agree. It, it, I'd agree with you. It would be nice to see him go out with a, a real classic series. OK, one other good... Please. Is it? I thought we had two more. We do, but I'm just oh, from you. Uh, okay, one more from me. Um, I think I'm, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the classic writer. I've got mm. I've got the name of the classic writer now. Rona Monroe. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Rona Monroe can do in the modern era. Okay. Yeah, me is, too. Is Rona a man or woman, by the way? Woman. Is a woman. Yeah, I thought I assumed it was with the name like Rona. Yes. Well, I thought it was, I saw it written as a he the other day. Really? Yeah. Perhaps an error then. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm quite in, I'm quite intrigued by that. Me so too. That, that's that's one for me, and that gives us one more thing to look forward to. Have you got another one? Um. I'm gonna say Missy. Yeah. And Ooh, slash the master. Yeah, I think that that was that would be interesting. I'm, if, in fact, if I can add my angle on that yes i i think more i'm 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 looking forward to seeing how they've got the master and missy in it mm. so together yeah maybe yeah. they're not tracking the doctor at his time like maybe they're tracking the master yeah yeah could be right mm. very intrigued by that yes what we're not looking forward to then see if we can think of five okay. or pass them on to what we look forward to okay first one from me yeah. Bill. Okay. That might be harsh. Yeah. It's harsh, but I don't know, I've just... I've still not warmed to her, really, in terms of... Um, no, we need to know. see her properly. It's, it's very unfair for me to make this judgement, um, but I don't know, it just... Everything just seems a little bit... feels a bit, a bit forced. Yes, it does. That's, and there's not any... I'm not digging a, a, a pole by any means there. No. The, the whole, everything surrounding the character just feels a little bit forced. Mm. Um, would, would that make your five? Maybe, yeah. Just mm -hmm. bit as a character, because any new companion or doctor, they yeah. or writer or showrunner or anything new, they sort of make you a bit nervous that it's going to be bad. Mm. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We've only got a week to wait till we properly see Bill for the first time. Yep. Have you got anything to add to the bad collection? Um, I'm going to say smile yeah. in emoji box. This week, whilst the story details have come out, I sort of think I'm I'm looking forward to it a tiny bit more. Yeah. However, still not sure. No, I, I don't like the idea of emoji box. Yeah. It's well, it sounds quite interesting, though, is, is that they would... If I, if I read, if I heard right what you read earlier on, um, it sounds like the, the inhabitants of whatever planet it is can't speak and therefore mm. they use these, these robots as their communication yes. system. So I mean that's, that's quite, quite that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, what else? There's not, there's not that much I'm not looking for. Yeah, to. me neither. Uh, but, um, equally... I'm not looking forward for the Daleks being in it again. No, neither am I. I'm a bit bored of the Daleks. Yeah. Uh, they're in it so much nowadays that yeah. I think they just they just don't excite me anymore. When they're in it every couple of years, yeah. or when they made a cameo over the last few series and they haven't had a proper series for a couple of years... Um, I feel different and I feel, yay, we've got a Dalek yeah. story, we haven't had this for a while. But now it just feels boring. We had one last series to open up the series, yeah. so I'm really hoping it's a cameo. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think it will be as well. I sure think I think the other side of it as well is is sitting down in October, November time, whenever it was. I think it was November time, and watching Power of the Daleks, yeah. which was such a brilliant episode. Yeah, amazing. It made you think that's what a Dalek story should be like. Yes. And we've not seen one like that for a long time. Really. No, we haven't for a long, long time. Yeah. So I I think that's in there, which makes up three, is it? Yes. Um, so is there, are there two other things that we're not looking forward to? Can I change it to a looking forward to? You can change it to a looking forward to, yeah. Um, this is kind of half and half between both, I would say. Yeah. Is I'm going to. Yes. I thought you might be, yeah. Because I don't know which one to go in, whether it's a yes or a mm-hmm. no. Because. I'm kind of looking forward to how he plays out as a character, and I really yeah. liked him in Return of Doctor Mysterio. I did, yeah. But there's a danger I, that having him and Bill in it, it could get a bit too could, silly. Could get a bit silly, yeah. Uh, could get a bit annoying. Mm. But having said that, um, I don't know. I sort of quite like it when there's a couple of companions. I like the TARDIS off. team, as we yeah. call it, rather than just having one companion like yeah. we did with Clara for a few years. Yeah. You know, it's it's good to have a TARDIS team, finally. Yeah. I think uh, as my fifth one I'm not looking forward to. Um, on the basis that we've got all these old... Sonic screwdrivers being seen. I hope we're not going to get too much focus on the powers of the sonic screwdrivers again. No, me neither. There is something about it where they they just seem like pretty much there's not really much threat when you've got a sonic screwdriver. There There was a funny line actually, wasn't there? I can't can't remember the line. There was a comment about that in the forest. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so that's five things we like. Five things we're not looking forward to. The one of them in there could go either way, couldn't it? Yes. In the, in the, in the knots, which is the one yard old. I, no, I don't yep. disagree with that. No. Um, is there anything else in particular that <laughs> we've missed out? I, don't, I, I am looking forward as well to seeing what Jamie Matheson's story is. Yeah, he like. has been very good. Definitely in this series eight stories. Yeah. Uh, for Mummy on Air and Express and Flatline. Yep. I think Girl Who Died may have been better if he just wrote it on himself. By yeah. himself rather than the help of Steve Moffat, because he sort of interfered in his ideas and stuff. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So, you know, it's good to see him get his full story potential back, but it could be the last we see of Tony Madison in stories, because I've got a feeling Chibnall may change the well, writer. Well, it sounds like he's going to be going for this different style of writing, doesn't he? What they call the American... Um, writing room. Writing room, yeah. So that could change things considerably, but we yeah. shall see. Maybe you'll be in the room. Um, yeah. Anything else that you want to comment about? It's cause it's not um, long. This time, this time next week, we'll be oh, warming we'll be ourselves our up ready for new episode. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It seems like it's gone so quickly. Mm. It seems though it's actually been however many months. Oh yeah, sixteen months. Sixteen since months. The last series. That is astounding, isn't it? So, uh, sixteen months. Wow, well um, one and a half years. I know. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, on that basis then, um, by the fact that we've just hit the hour mark for the podcast, should we get on to our final item? Of the yes, day? let's do that. And it's our review of In the Forest of the Night. <laughs> Last week, it was the randomizer's final pick for us. Uh, so the random episode generator, a.k.a. the randomizer, yes, the final episode that it chose for us randomly was In the Forest of the Night, I wish I could say. Don't, um, don't worry though, folks, it will return after the after series after 10. After series 10. The randomizer um, will return. Yes. So, this one's not a very popular one. Um, one of us likes it, one of us doesn't like it, and we'll reveal which way round it is later on, and it may surprise you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so do you want my usual synopsis? Yes. Okay. Um, all of London is covered with trees that have grown overnight. Yes. There. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will go a bit more onto that. Um, basically, that, that is the, the basic thrust of the story. Basically, but, that's all that happens. But what you've got there is um, Clara and Danny, both of which are teachers at the Coal Hill 
school, um, they've arranged for an overnight stay at the London Zoo. And um, when they wake up, all the kids wake up, they find out that the, the world as they know it, and in their instance, uh, the surrounding area for, for London, have been covered by all these large forests. Um, one of the students has been having issues. Her sister's mysteriously disappeared yes. or run away, and it's really upset her. And um, she wanders off and is found by the doctor who's landed his TARDIS in Trafalgar Square. But when they get out, they find that Trafalgar Square doesn't look anything like Trafalgar Square because it is covered in lots and lots of trees. Um, eventually, uh, Clara and Danny regroup with the doctor and, and the young girl um, to try and understand what's going on. But actually, it's one of these rare occasions where actually the doctor's unsure himself. Um, they... The little girl is having, she's sort of like sensing about this happening. Yes. Um, she's actually sort of, there's a premonition of it in the school books that she's left inside the TARDIS that Clark, well, Clark, sorry, not that she'd left in the TARDIS, that Clara had left in the TARDIS to Mark, which Danny Pink notices, and then it's sort of blown Clara's cover that she's not been going off on adventures. So Danny now knows that uh, she's been lying all along. She yeah. does go off on adventures with the Doctor. Yeah. Um, so the little girl wanders off yet again um, Doctor and Clara go off to try and find her and whilst they're doing that um, they come into contact with some of the animals that have escaped from the zoo and then they, the big crux of the matter is actually the plant, the spoiler alert I should say because I'm just about to blow the whole story out into the open yeah. the reason the trees have appeared um, isn't as sinister as how we first think it's actually They've, they've grown up overnight to provide a protection against the big solar flare that's uh, that's gonna yes. gonna hit um, much in the same way as it has done in throughout history. Um, although it's not grown up overnight, it's just no. normally history. It's been due. To, I think I think the doctor references times when uh, a solar flare would have hit Brazil, but the rainforest sort of uh, prevented the damage. Blah blah blah. Yes. So I think that's probably enough okay. of a. Of a lead into it. Switcheroony. Okay, so um, what are your basic thoughts on In the Forest of the Night? Mm, I'm not a big fan of this one, to be honest. No. Um, I, judge, I guess that by the fact that when it came up on the on, on the randomizer last week, you had that look like you were going to jump out the window. Yeah. I'm afraid this isn't great. Last time, before Series 9, we had Inferno, which mm -hmm. was a classic. Mm -hmm. For Series 10, we had the complete opposite in The Forest of the Night. It's quite good uh, for a family-friendly episode, and I think it is the most one of the most family-friendly episodes. It's got a lot of kids in. Yeah. I don't like kids in Doctor Who. I don't like kids. <laughs> I don't like them in Doctor Who. Obviously, I'm a kid. But... Um, but do you like other kids? <laughs> yes, but I don't like them in Doctor Who. I don't yeah. really like them acting. It's no, just... no. I'm a bit funny about kid actors quite often. I, I, yeah. I, I got on the way with these. They were a little bit... Ah, uh, they were annoying. <coughs> no, they were one of the worst bunch in Doctor Who. You think so? Right, so? Yeah. Yeah, some of them at least. <laughs> oh. I actually... I actually quite like it, you know. it's, it's I wouldn't say it's not sort of up there as my my favourite or anything but um, and it's, it certainly wouldn't hit a uh, what we use a green colour coding don't we for our, yes, for our classics I certainly wouldn't have it in there it's, no definitely it's definitely going to be in the lower echelons of the of the chart but I find it quite watchable there's bits I, I don't like on it but um, overall I think it's, it's quite a charming story um, it's it looks nice I like the whole yeah. idea of London being overtaken by by trees. It looks beautiful. Yeah. I like... Well, I'll come on to my, the like I'm going to mention in a minute when we go to the section called Too Good, Too Bad. We're going to go Which is there now. now. Too Good, Too Bad. We only try and both think of a good thing each and a bad thing each to make too good and too bad. Okay, are we doing that now? Right? Yeah. Okay, a okay. good... I would say this is... A great episode to entice a family in to Doctor Who, which, in my opinion, it was perfectly needed. Mm -hmm. for series eight, series eight, and series nine—they were very dark yeah. stories. 
say the episode which followed it, Dark Water, Dead in Heaven, it is a very dark story basing around the subject of death yeah. and the afterlife. Um, and that was very dark, and so were some of the plots, and particularly the Doctor in series um, 8. So uh, it was sort of a light relief type story, which I think was perfect for a sort of one before the finale. Okay. Um, personally, um, my good, to make too good, um, my good would be the one that I was just about to mention and then decided to save it back for this section, which is I like the way that it portrays Clara because it's, it's one of the first times where you really get to appreciate that Clara and Danny are, are very, very different. Danny's there all about looking after the kids and stuff yes. like that. Whereas Clara, um, the, the selfish element of her wanting to get out and explore and see the universe, I mean, that comes through quite high. It does, yeah. So I, I, like the way they, I like the way they did that. What yes, I would it say, very good. I don't think... I think this is one of the weakest episodes in terms of Peter Capaldi. It is, I, I don't yeah. think... It doesn't necessarily suit him as well as it the doesn't. majority of episodes. Well, Series 8 was meant to be Matt Smith, actually. Yes, true, yeah. I was looking through top stories in Doctor TV, because I'm yeah. that sad, and uh-huh. I found out that one of the top stories was Matt Smith stays on for Series uh, t- um, 8. Uh, okay. And then the next top story was Matt Smith leaves Doctor Who. <laughs> so yeah. people had... Uh, obviously, that as Stephen Moffat must have written Series Eight, or the majority of it, for Matt Smith's story, yeah, no, and true. then edited it yeah. afterwards to fit more with Capaldi stuff. Yeah, edited some of the episodes. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we've got our too good, too bad. I would have to say the child actors. I've yeah. mentioned them a bit. I'm not a big fan of child actors. Definitely the ones which base around mm-hmm. children. Uh, Fear Her, yeah. um, Doctor the Widow and the Wardrobe, mm-hmm. In the Forest of the Night, yeah. those Night, are all Night the terrors. episodes that, Night Terrors, all the episodes that people despise, yeah. and they all have children actors in. Yeah, so true. sadly, when it's when children actors, or a lot of children actors in, it doesn't really bother me that much when it's one that's a minorish part, Yeah, but when there are when they're the main part of the story, sort of bugs me. Yeah. I think my bad would be um, probably... Uh, probably just the fact that there's not really any exciting monster in it. Which no, I know it's grip you. And I guess, you know, thinking about the trailer, the scariest bit in it is when they see a tiger, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know about you, although I'd rather not meet a tiger, I'd rather meet a tiger than a Zygon. Yes. Unless it's a Zygon, of course. Yeah, no, no. A good Zygon. Mm. I'd love to be a good Zygon, of course. Yeah. So I think, I think that might that'd be my bad. Um, another thing that could go in the good category, and it, well, it shouldn't go in the good category, but one of the best things, I think what, what blew me away when I watched the episode the first time wasn't the episode, it was the trailer for Dark Water. Oh, yeah, Dark because Water is just... That trailer really enticed yeah. me in. And it's I thought James Bond-like. Yeah, yeah. I thought, this is going to be brilliant. This yeah. is going to be really great, and it was. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, all in all, um, I like, I'll like. tell you what else it does quite well. It builds up the, the, the relationship quite a bit more with, with Danny and... Um, and Clara and, and sets it up really, really well Just, yeah. for the uh, for the, the events that begin at the the, the start of, of Dark Water. Yeah. So anything else to say on in the Forest of the Night? I wouldn't say so. No, no. we've got Twitter polls and. Okay. Um, yeah. What do we have, what, what do we get on the Twitter poll? I've I've got to circulate it on mine because. Uh, so really busy. we've got forty votes. Yeah. Um, forty. Oh, forty. That's, that's quite, Very quite good. Amount, Thank you for everyone who voted. Um. We've got 16% terrible, mm-hmm. 43% alright, which is the majority, 18% good, and 23% fantastic. So it shows you that, as, as we probably find with most of them, I mean, even if you go back to the Paradise Towers poll, where both of us, despite the April Fool's joke that you did yep. um, last, week, last week, I think both of us would probably say that we hate Paradise Towers with passion, we but some people it. thought it was fantastic, didn't they? Uh, I well, think c- so. Certainly they thought it was good. One person thought it was fantastic. Yeah, so it shows you in the end, it is all about, it's all a matter of taste. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Does that, that rounds up that item really, doesn't it? We've probably not got too much more to say about in the forest of the night. What have we got on next week's show? Not much happening, is there next week? Wait, we need to do scores. Oh yeah, we've got to do the scores. Yeah, let's do that first. Why um, not? Let's score it. So, monsters, villains. Okay, monsters and villains. Zero. Because there aren't okay. any. Character development. Character development's quite strong, I think. I think I've touched already on the the character development between Clara and and Danny. Um, I, I'm going to give it a eight. Um, excitement. Hmm. <laughs> not very exciting, is it? Um, I, I I like the episode, but it's not very exciting. There's at no point did I feel any form of tag of excitement. I'm going to give it two. Really? Yeah. Because it's not as exciting, this is it? This is going to be awfully It's going to have a really low score. This but, is going to be a record low, apart from fear, but obviously. I, 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 I think the scoring, because of the categories we've got, don't... Um, Make up the whole. Don't benefit this episode. Um, pace? It's got quite a good pace to it, though. I would give it a seven pace. Um, and story? I like the story, you know. I, I think it's a nice idea. I, I probably, I'll give it a... Seven, I think, for the story. Go yeah, get your maths working. What does that make it? Got it. Yeah. Okay, twenty-four out of fifty. Okay. So, so below the half mark. It is below the half mark. It's probably the lowest one, but maybe it wasn't helped by the fact there wasn't any monsters in it, which is no. probably the key scoring criteria. Yes. So uh, overall score. An overall score. I I think I'll probably give it a seven overall. I'm gonna give it a six point five. Okay. Okay, that sounds that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so in the forest of the night, good one to watch if you if you've got the family there. Rainy um, day episode, I would say. Yeah. Rain, no, day not with the rainy. Family. Not rainy day episode. I'm just getting confused with something else I typed today about another episode. Yeah, I, I, but I say if you if you've got if you've got a big family, it's a rainy day. Yeah, rainy episode day episode. Quite, there's a couple of funny Capaldi lines in it yeah. and stuff. So, um, yeah. Aside yeah. from that. There's a lot better. Yeah, there are. There's a, a lot, lot better. It's, and a few worse. It's probably the probably the for me the third worst um, Capaldi episode. I'm gonna say second worst. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer it than Robot of Sherwood. Uh, I think I slightly prefer Robot yeah. of Sherwood. Okay. Slightly. Okay. So, what do we have on next week's show? It's episode 207 and it's a very, very exciting one because next Saturday, on the day of recording of episode 207 and the day of airing of 207, we, well, no, we will be previewing series 10 because next week the pilot, the opening story of series 10 Airs, and that means the brand new series begins, which means it's a very, very exciting time for the podcast now. Definitely. It seems like a long time since we've talked about a, a new episode, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So that's that's uh, well, 16 months to be precise. 16 months, yeah. Be the first one since we started hosting these on Podomatic. Yeah, no, we did Return of Dr. Mysterio. Oh, yeah, no, you're right, I'm talking about Bish. Yeah. As always. And class. And class, yeah, and uh, ignore me. Okay. I've had any, I don't even know why I bother turning up to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it should just be me. No, yeah. that'd be rubbish. Talking you about it back. just being you, um, you were talking to me about uh, like a new venture that you were going to do um, to follow the series. Is it worth just mentioning that? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mention that next week. Okay. So you'll talk about your new venture next week. Yeah. What else do we have on the show? Um, next week we also will. So we'll, the big, the big thrust of it will be reviewing the the pilot. We well, no, won't be reviewing the pilot. What, what are we doing next week? We're going. Well, I know what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to rewatch as um, it was the last. Yeah. You series. should have did that in as I thought that was what you were going to do. Talking of just you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been better, wouldn't yeah. it? Um, we decided as we did last year, uh, preceding series nine that we would watch the last two episodes of the previous series, excluding the Christmas episode. So we will be watching Heaven Sent and How Bent and re-evaluating them. Yes, so, so we'll be... We've already watched them on you know, yes. from last year and talked about them on the show, but we will re-evaluate. We'll be doing a review on that, a full review. We've also got a preview of the pilot. Mm -hmm. And that's probably about it, isn't it? Oh, and we'll be doing our top companion debuts. Oh, yes. As well as a sort of mini article. Yeah, okay. Uh, and the latest news. 
Okay, so um, we try and get a little bit of debate going on the show. If people want to debate with us and chat about what they like, what they don't like, um, how can they contact us? Uh, you can contact us at who time un as in n space at Twitter. And also on Twitter, if you want to speak to me, you can do. I'm Mark with a C, and that's Mark Freak Geek. Um, and you can um, tell us about In the Forest of the Night, Series 10 Hopes and Expectations, uh, and Thoughts on the Pilot uh, before it airs, um, Heaven Sent Hell Bent opinions, or any of your thoughts on the latest news, like the new trailer, John Sim returning, new titles, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, yeah. We'll be happy to debate it and talk to you, and we, we, will, um, we will see the side of your opinions. Excellent. You can also contact us on YouTube uh, on Miss Lucy. You can contact us at uh, Podomatic on Dot Two Time and Space. You can contact us at our houses by coming round and ringing on our doorbells. If you can find us, yes. If you are, we'll be a bit scared because you've obviously stalked us. And also, our doorbell doesn't work. Well, that yeah. is true. Yeah, that so, is true. At well. HQ so and we'd have to leave you outside. Uh, at my proper house, I don't have a doorbell. I have a. Um, you have a knocker. A yeah. knocker. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to it. I've yes. been Dr. Cool. And I've been Lewis Moon. We'll see you next week on our ser- our big massive series ten preview show. I can't Ooh. believe it begins next week. Well maybe Monster Procession though. No. Um so um <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Same time. Same space. Tatty bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.